and, and notice I've shaped down the, the term sure. a little bit. I think it's a little bold or some shit. Anyway, they're, they're, they're major seeds. I just, I just defined it, right? Are these wild? I forgot what the. It's not really that. All right. Um, So this is how you deal with E to the matrix. Um, but that question, you don't need to do this, by the way. I just want you to see this. You actually don't need to do this to answer that question. Right? So now, this was, I mean, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just showing you that for certain, that when you, have a, when you have something, a matrix, this is a matrix, because sitting as a matrix, this is what E to the matrix looks like. And I threw a little eye there to whammy it up a bit. So that's what it looks like. Um, just to show you that, uh, that this is that, this is that, and sure enough, they're the identity matrix. Okay, so um, and again, I don't, you don't need to do anything like this on the problem. I'm just trying to show you some basic mathematics of matrices. Okay, but your problem is this. So again, this is actually the easiest problem in the problem set. So what do I do with this? Okay, so you always want to read the whole problem. That might next, help. Next is find the A prime x y z terms of Wait, what? That's just find the A and X A prime and X Y Z in terms of A and X Y Z. Or N is like in the Z direction. So that's part B when you heard it. Oh part okay. okay. It's Sherman. Oh yeah, we're doing a determinant. So sorry, a determinant. Uh, I forgot why we're doing a determinant. I, I guess the, the determinants and traces mean. Oh, when the, the determinant, sorry, when the determinant of a matrix, when a matrix is transformed with a unitary transformation, the determinant doesn't change, which means the eigenvalues are the same. Now we've covered. You make a matrix, and then you do the i. Use MATLAB say what's the eigenvalues of the matrix, and it's the eigenvalues of quantum mechanics. They're the same thing when you, when you put an operator in matrix form. Plug it in MATLAB. What are the eigenvalues of that matrix? It's exactly the quantum mechanical solution because the matrix is the operator. Eigenvalues are the eigenvalues, and you can get the eigenfunctions too. Um, so what? What? There's a theorem. I actually I really should have put that on there. I forgot this stuff myself. When you make these types of transformations, so you've got, you're basically doing this. Again, I simplified it. So that's this. When the determinant doesn't change, that means that the eigenvalues of the Hamiltonian haven't changed. So this is just getting you used to, so I, I didn't unfortunately get to this yet. Um, but these are unitary operators like we last we talked about last time. So what this is doing is it's changing the Hamiltonian to a different basis. I didn't quite, I showed you how to change a ket to a different basis. I didn't show you how to change an operator. Uh, so sorry about that. And I showed you last time. So yeah, I, I didn't make a use of the time. I showed you that you would change. A to B through some unitary operator. Unfortunately, the transpose, I know that, that's a little weird, but um, I showed you that. Um, but an operator, if you want to change an op the basis of an operator, you do it this way. So this is, so I'm showing you some operator mathematics. So I showed you some theoretic how to change state mathematics. This is what we're doing on Wednesday, operator mathematics. So, so again, if you have an operator, and operators are often matrix form, and you have these transforming operators, like transforming to a new basis set, 
the determinant doesn't change, that means that the that nothing has really been changed at all, which is good, right? If we have a Hamiltonian matrix, and I'm just switching between basis sets, that the that the eigenvalues and the eigenstates would change is nonsense. It's just a representation in the basis. But that doesn't to change the eigenvalues in the Hamiltonian would be to change reality itself. So no, you're not doing that. Now, one of the reasons this works out is because of this property. These transforming. Now that now that I've told you about this, now let me let me put it more correctly because this is what they really are. This is what I'm really talking about. I'm talking about these unitary transformation matrices. Um, so. Um, So there's the so the, so the unitary matrix that does this, or the transpose does that. They're inverses of each other. That means this. Okay. Uh, these are examples of unitary matrices. And so when you um, alter a Hamiltonian matrix with these unitary operators. It transforms the basis like from SX, S, SZ to SX, which is one of your problems, uh, but it doesn't change the eigenvalues. Um, Your still spin, spin up is still, if it changed the eigenvalues, then spin up would not be h bar over 2. Uh, so, so that would be really insane, right? Because that's the spin of an electron, and that's not, not going to change. Okay, so, anyway, so the validation of that problem is, is what? So, what's the next step? Again, remembering this is the easiest problem in the problem set. And to answer it, just read the whole problem. So that it's invariant so under the transformation. That's what it's going to ask. Okay, keep reading the whole problem. Same before after the transformation. Also, here are some properties of the determinants. A determinant ABC, B determinant C to B equals determinant BCA. Okay. So, so, the so, so, so now what? Equal determinant H bar or er, Hamiltonian sure. U dagger U. Okay. Equal the determinant. Well, I think we can stop there. Cool. Right, you it's see it? Equal to equal to Hamiltonian. Equal to Hamiltonian. Equal to Hamiltonian. Right, it's, it, this is a stupid question. Right? <laughs> anyway, but I'm glad you asked it just because I actually really wanted to talk about, talk about this. And then hopefully it'll be, unfortunately I just didn't really cover everything. Um, I mean, I technically I told Wednesday, right? So. I'm going to talk more about how you transform matrices. I, I mean, I hope you thought this was kind of cool and you can, you know, um, yeah, transform. This. Everything has been in SZ, right? So if you want to do everything in SX, this is how you do it. And that'd be like, well, sure, but why? And, and that's fine. And then I show you on question five a real example of why this stuff's important. Um, so that's how you transform the basis, but you know that really, you really want to know what the operators are. Operators are way more important. Besides, you know the operator, you, kind of, you already know the eigen, uh, eigen functions too, because that's how you build the matrix, the, the operator matrix. So, so this is actually kind of more important. And when you have this, you then know eigenvalues and eigenstates. So, because you just plug in the matrix form in the MATLAB and just type what's the eigenvalues and eigenstates. And now you know, now that is the complete, whatever quantum problem you're solving, it's been solved. That's it. That's the end. All right, remember, I don't have long. I gotta go soon, so what, what else? Yeah? Okay, I'm going in 10 minutes. I'm going five. Five is the solid state one. Yeah, again, it's a whole bunch of words. I just, I used it.
to force you to learn something new, whereas the question itself is actually really small. That's because I'm so wordy in class. I waste a lot of time in class, so I'm, I'm kind of sticking it to you on the problem set today. Okay. It's just, you know, like I say, all of you are going to be, almost all of you are going to be solid. <laughs> all right, not you, but <clears throat> for the most part, you folks, where, where do you get in, though? What? Mechanical. Oh, you're a mechanical. That's right, right. Mechanical. Yeah. Oh, you're both mechanical. Are you both in solid state materials? No problem. Oh, okay. All right, in chemistry, most of the physical analytical are, sol are, are doing surfaces, solid state, catalysts. So I, I definitely, I mean, I'm sure this is still, this will be useful to you, right? <laughs> Not, have, knowledge is always useful. But for the chemist, it's like going to be insanely useful. Anyway, all right, so, so what? So, so what are we doing? You gotta, you gotta throw a question at me. You gotta get specific. All right. The, uh, the solid state be number five. Number five. You wanna, wanna transform the, the S, P, X, P, Y, P, B into in SP3 compromise. Yeah, and again, uh, now, um, so we can start this one out. I'll show you how to start it, but again, unfortunately, on Wednesday, I didn't quite get to the transformation of the matrix. Okay, so, um, now what I did show you, though, I did show you that for a state uh, vector, okay, let's let's say that we have some state, um, what, is, what did I do, alpha? So, sorry, let me call it gamma, let's call it gamma, okay. And normally, you would have that in this form, and what a unitary uh, transformation does is it can transform it to, to this form. And now you're also seeing a little bit more about why a ket is a bit more than a wave function. It's not obliged. It's not obliged to be a particular wave function. So, um, so we can think of this as like the state. You know, I've been showing you cats, and I'm like, oh, it's like e to the i k x. Okay, but I could transform that same state to cosine plus i sine. So I can read records, so, so that's why I'm telling you a ket is a little bit more than just a wave function. There, there's actually more to it, there's more information to it, because it can be transformed this way. Now again, that's very abstract. What I mean is E B I K X is the same as cosine plus I sine. So that's a transformation, but nothing has changed. So that's the kind of mathematics I'm talking about. Hopefully that wasn't like particularly mind building, right? Okay, now the basis of the problem is such that you have um, that you technically have px, py, and pz. All right, so this cadmium state, so gamma would be the state of the cadmium atom in this material. It's being projected onto the 5s state, the 5px, the 5py, and the 5pz state. Now, for you know, the atom is going to be degenerate, so that's why I, I just removed those labels because they're degenerate. Okay, but what you got to do is you got to multiply this by a matrix. Sorry, I didn't give myself enough room. And sometimes it's even hard. So I didn't even tell you how I didn't tell you what the dimensionality of the matrix would be, but the, the neat thing is, you can figure this out real easy. Now, I gave you a formula. I did have to give you a formula for the matrix, for the, for the um, I think this is, again, I think it's the transpose, technically. It actually doesn't matter, it, as long as you're consistent. If you call this U or U transpose, it, it actually doesn't matter. Just decide what it is and stick with it, all right? Okay, now, um, I, I told so so again this this one I told you on Monday but this is how you actually use it because you know it's it's nice to be abstract in class but then you actually got to pedal to the metal you 
you've got to actually do something with it. Okay, now how do I know it's a 4 by 4 matrix? Well, okay, because that's 4 and that's easy, all right? But notice that you have to transform it to be SP3. And, and remember I was saying, there's, there's really four SP3. You think like, oh, SP3, that's one thing. No, that's four things. Because SP3 is for tetrahedral things, and tetrahedrons means I got something here, I got something here, and I got something here, and I got something here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Th those are your four. One, that's how it transforms, right? Okay, now I already told you that it transforms as this. That's one of the ways I know where I've done it right, because again, you know, for every plus there's a minus. That's true for each one of them, and they're never the same. This pattern is different from that pattern, it's different from that pattern. And the ES is, ES is always positive, and that has to do with the symmetry. Um, and that's orbital is the same no matter which way you look at it, but in P orbital, one reason that this works the way it does is that, um, so let's, I don't know if this is the X orbital I'm drawing. Um, okay, so you know you've got a, a positive and a negative lobe, right? And let's say that the S is in the positive phase. So notice that the interaction with this PX orbital is, is technically bonding. That's actually anti-bonding, right? Now this is why you've got these pluses and minuses in the P's, but the S's are always the same because, um, so you can see why depending on which one you're talking about, you might have a plus or a minus. I just showed you that. But in terms of the selenium S orbitals, good, 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 good. Okay, now, develop this to turn that to that. It's unbelievably easy. It's shockingly easy. All right, then you plug that into MATLAB, and then you say, so you call it UMAT T. So in MATLAB, you call that, say, you call it UMAT T, UMAT transpose, and UMAT the inverse of UMAT T. There you go. Okay. Uh, right, so, so real quick, real quick, then let me tell you, um, then with that, what you get is, um, then to transform the matrix, to transform the matrix, so I haven't told you this stuff, to transform the matrix itself, do this. Okay, and then MATLAB, you would say, U mat T H, let's say you call this H. Okay. And then this would be in that format I told you. There's um It 
it looks like this. It's going to be kind of nutty. What you then do is add, add sigmas to the right spot. So if, if this one and that one are missing, you do that. And then what you do is you then reverse it this way. So the, the matrix is altered. And then you do that to go back. Notice I, re I, I didn't mess that up, I reversed I reversed it because look at this. So you see what I did? You see how I knew how to, how to go backward in my I reversed the U's? Because look at that. Yeah. Now again, I actually did, I did monkey with it, right? But it, imagine if you didn't, if you didn't, if you didn't add any of those sigmas to the SP3 basis representation. If, if I if I did this and then do this in MATLAB, and out comes the for you know don't change anything, uh, and out comes the original matrix. So the reality is you're stopping there. You're going to alter this and then do that to give me the answer. So uh, again, really not too bad, but I, I just mostly hope that you know you, you can see what this stuff really does and why it's useful. And literally, I am actually writing a paper where I am doing this. This is how I came up with it. <laughs> Good timing because I, I mean, not to compliment, compliment myself too much, but like, like when I took this class, the problem that I had was way abstract. It was actually, um, but it, you know what? I'll send it to you. I deleted it off the problem set. What I was asked to do was to do spin x, y, z, where the basis set was arbitrarily pointed. So, so we're always doing things in SZ, which is pointed up. This person said, represent everything with an arbitrary angle. So my basis set, now in, in the problem before, um, in one of your problems, you're actually going from Z to X. But the problem we had was to go from here to a, a, a basis where the, the spin vector was arbitrarily pointed God knows where. It's unbelievable. I mean, you can obviously do the question, but it's unbelievably abstract. Why the hell are you doing that? The answer would be to change your stern Verloc Z's just twi because you twisted the magnet in some weird direction. Okay, that's fine. It's just weird as hell. I don't know really what the heck I'm doing this for. Whereas, I, again, I hope that this is actually, this hopefully makes some sense. And you actually understand a little bit. Where, where, did, um, where did SP3 hold? What, what do they really mean? You know? Just kind of assume, oh, well, it's tetrahedral. Well, that, now hopefully you really get it. I hope. <laughs> I mean, it helped me understand that we can go on way better than I did before. Anyway, um, I'm almost out of time. So I, I, got, I got a charity event downtown. So um, last minute, last minute, I can do something if it's quick. Huh? Fog 1B. Fog B. 4B. 4B. What's 4B? 4B is the. Uh, uh, so that's the substitution. Yeah, yeah. So you, the, U, uh, the substitution of this. You did that? Yeah, and the, the, bra, bar, yeah. the bra becomes the raw matrix. Oh, um, the corner matrix. Okay. Um, yeah, I, and honestly, that one isn't in, in my head right now. Um, well, well, it would be, I mean, look at what I wrote. So that would actually, if I recall, so like I say, the U matrix is um, a little bit. I mean, I mean, look at look at what it says, right? Yeah. Here we go. I think that's it. My biggest thing was that's a it's plus sign in between the middle of them. That I didn't get. Oh, that so, plus. Just yeah. regular plus. Yes. The, the, it took me a long time to not realize it wasn't a bra or a cat. Yeah. Well, a yeah. Plus yeah. sign. Yeah. A plus sign. Yeah. Just a plus sign between yeah. the two terms. S X plus. Yeah. In that bra, I would basically that has plus. Oh. Oh yeah, wait a minute. I gave it to you right there. Yeah. Right? So then you gave, you gave it to us. 
that took me, I didn't can't get those separated. Yeah, together. sometimes, yeah. yeah. Now remember, now part of one of your problems, let me guess, what your problem is how do you put that in a matrix form? Yes. Yeah. Okay, well, how do you put anything in a matrix form? Then you hopefully you get you transpose from the uh, part A, and then um, multiply them out and see that they're one. So, so that's why I'm saying it, it's a bit funky that I mean actually this this one really isn't that bad. It gives you a better idea how to how to make U the, the unitary matrix. It's just again U transpose is the one that's actually more useful. So so question one, uh, question one is actually more like this one. Sorry, part A. It's more like this one. Where it's actually you can just like look at this. You see where you're where you're starting, where you're going. It's not hard to just look at the thing and say, oh well, okay, that's one and that's minus one. And and then and then you'll do this this way, which is a little bit more abstract. Um, I mean I mean not sorry. This is easy. This just comes out what it is, and then you'll multiply these two and you'll do the number one. Yeah. Okay, well, I think we had a run.